See, when you worship God, everything changes. When you worship God, the things that used to, that, that, that overwhelm you take a back seat to who God is in your life. When you worship God, the atmosphere and in the, the environment begins to change. So he begins to empower her to change her thinking about life, and that's done by worship. And if you're ready to take your life to greater, worship has to be a part of what's going to go on in your life because you'll never have greater until you exalt the greater one. The, when I, the more I exalt the great one, my God, everything else becomes greater in my life. And so he begins to talk to her about being great. He offers her uh, eternal life. Then he talks to her about worship. And then she does something. Something shifts. She said, I came up here to get water, but I had an encounter with God. And here's the deal. I believe some of you came in here because it's Sunday, but you're about to have an encounter with God. You came in here because it's the first Sunday of 2018, but it was just a setup. Somebody say it was a setup. She came, oh, I watch this. She walks up the mount, up the hill, carrying a water pot. Carrying this big old water pot to fill it up. She comes to the hill, has an encounter with Jesus, throw it on the screen. Then she leaves her water pot. Hold up. You were already on assignment to do something which was get water. But then you had an encounter with Jesus and the Bible says that she left her water pot. 28. And went her way into the city. Here's what I'm going to, this is the, the, the point I'm going to talk on for, well, this is where it happened. There are people in this room, you've been carrying this old water pot for a long time. You've carried some stuff into each year, and you carried it out of that year. Jesus had an appointment with her. Jesus had a, a mission that he needed to accomplish with her. And he said, I know you've been carrying that water pot, but what I offer you is more, is greater than that water pot you've been carrying. And many of us have been walking around carrying unforgiveness into every year. Carrying resentment into every year. Carrying insecurity into every year. And Jesus is saying, I met you at the well so you can leave what you've been carrying and be filled with what I'm pouring out. I, you, you've been carrying all the abuse and abandonment and let down and disappointment. Your history doesn't look very good, but you've been carrying your history for a long time. And Jesus said, if you will just let me have what you're carrying, I'm going to give you greater. And today, I just might as well cut through the chase. It's time for us to leave some stuff behind at the feet of Jesus and go become everything that he said we could become. It's time for, here's the thing, until you let go of that, you'll never be able to hold this because your hands are preoccupied with the pots that you're carrying. Your hands are holding on to pain and resentment and you've built a prison around yourself and you can't have greater because you're clinging to lesser. You're clinging to who left you. You're clinging to who fired you. You're clinging to who, who turned their back on you. And she said, I'm ready for something greater. I'm ready to go and become everything that God has for me to become, but I'll never become that until I leave this at his feet. And there are some things in this room that I'm challenging you 
to leave at the feet of Jesus. He has an appointment with you. He wants to heal you. He wants to restore you. He wants to put joy back into your life, peace back into your home, gladness back into your soul. But you'll never be able to get it as long as you're holding on to yesterday. And then she leaves the water pot. And she goes back into the city. And begins to say some stuff crazy. Come see a man. She went from. I can't think of a good word. What do they call? I'm thinking of a bad word. (laughs) She went from a hoochie. (laughs) To a preacher. same woman who done been through all these men got a label on her back saying she's a hoe and she's done and she's worthless and she's never going to be nothing but what they called her. The same woman that people would, would not look at in the eye and would talk about behind her back. The same woman who people would push out of their circle and not let them in. The same woman who they, they begin to just write stuff about on Facebook and criticize on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That woman is now going into a city saying, come see Jesus. Come see Jesus. I came to tell somebody in this room, it don't matter how you start in life. It matters how you finish. And I can't, you need to hear when I tell you it doesn't matter what yesterday looked like it was your yesterday that gave you credibility today they wouldn't believe that he's a saving God had you been through hell they wouldn't believe that he was a healing God had you not been sick they wouldn't believe that he was a way maker if you had all the ways but I came to tell somebody in this building that Jesus has an encounter for you that is going to change everything that you've ever been through all the stuff you're ashamed Shamed about all the stuff that you're hiding, all the stuff that nobody knows about. Jesus said, Once you have an encounter with me, they go, You're gonna brag about how good has been to me. You're gonna look at your family and say, Look what the Lord has done in my life. And it's time for us to let God heal our hearts so we can go back into our homes and watch Him heal our houses. But the way, only way you'll get a healed house is if you get a healed house heart and so this woman had to get a healed heart before she could go into her houses and I need you to hear me when I tell you this and I'm losing my voice so I better hurry up y'all ain't ready for this this woman who had all them labels Well, let's just think about it like this, like you. Let's just talk about you. When you go back and you start telling people about God and how good God has been, there are going to be some haters that look at you and say, well, ain't you the one who couldn't keep a man? Ain't you the one who lost your kids to CPS? Ain't you the one who was locked up and in prison? Ain't you the one who was who, who lost a job and couldn't keep a job? Ain't you the one? And I don't know if that one is in this room, but I know when I when they look at me and say, aren't you the one who was locked up? Aren't you the one who lost it all? Aren't you the one who had your businesses taken away? Aren't you the one who was lied on and cheated? Aren't you the one? I look at them square in the face and say, yes, that was me. But look at me now. Since I had a since I had an encounter with Jesus, he pick me up when they left me I came to tell somebody you're about to look at every hater in your life and say look at me now yes I was busted yes I was broke yes I had to cry myself to sleep in 2017 but I came to tell somebody in this room you're about to look at every hater in your life and say look at me now I dare you to touch three people and say look at me now hey I came to tell you today that they knew you one way but that ain't gonna compare to how they know you now God said, since you came in 2018, I'm going to do a miracle in your life. And every hater in the life is going to...
going to look at you and say, I remember you when, and you look at him now and say, but that's not who I am anymore, baby. Look at me now. I couldn't keep a man, but I found a man named Jesus. I couldn't keep a job, but my job is to worship my God. And I need to tell you right now that this is your year of greater and your baby. You're about to trip everybody out with what God's about to do in your life. People going to look at you and say it don't make sense for you to have what you have. Do what you do. Smile like you smile. You, you were suicidal last year and now you're singing and shouting. I came to tell you, you look at him in the eye and say, look at me now. Come on, somebody in the building say, look at me now. Look at me now. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how I've hurt. You don't know who left me. You don't know, yeah, 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 you see me now and I got my suit on. But you didn't know me back then when I was locked up, throwing the key away. But look at me now. You don't know me whenever I was struggling to make ends meet. But look at me now. You don't know me when I was praying how to stretch out some rice and beans. But look at me now. You don't know me when I was washing my baby girl in Walmart sink because we had the water turned off. But look at me. I ain't washing my kids in the sink anymore. They don't know what you've been through. See, 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 see. You wonder why? We worship because I know where I've been. And I know what I had to drop off at the feet of Jesus. I worship. I'm excited. I'm exuberant about my God. Because I know the fight that I had to fight. And I know the God that came to me where I was. And he fixed me. He healed me. He set me on my way. He healed my heart so I could have a healed house. And today you're in this room and you're carrying stuff into 2018 that God is saying, leave it at my feet. Let me take that issue because your children are dealing with your issues. Your family are dealing with your issues. And as long as you carry that pot, I'll never be able to give you what I got. And your children's testimony, if things don't change, is going to be they survived you. God forbid when my children testify about the goodness of God, that they talk about surviving my issues, that they talk about surviving the things that I refuse to give to Jesus. God forbid that I am the highlight reel of their testimony. But until I lay my pride, my arrogance, until I lay my unforgiveness, my bitterness, my hatred, my anger, my frustration, my until I lay it down, I'll never be able to walk into greater. And you're in the room, and life seems heavy. But God is saying, lay it at my feet. 